If you've received some boxes just like these, then that means you're the proud new owner of a Goblin kit car. And we're going to show you how to build it. There are 648 components to a Goblin kit car, delivered in five boxes. Now, you shouldn't worry too much, because most of that is just nuts and bolts. But to help you familiarise yourself with the car, the first thing you should do is perform a stock check. This will make sure you have all of the components needed to complete the build. Now, if you don't want to do a stock check and you just want to go straight into building the car, you, you can. Just skip to the next video, but be advised, Familiarising yourself with both the tools and components will make the build process a lot easier. Now, the first box we're going to open is the component box, as this is where you'll find the inventory list. You'll also find a USB stick that has an electronic copy of the list along with the Goblin build manual, a very important document. Now if you're working in teams, you might want to print off extra copies of the inventory list so that you can check multiple boxes at the same time. Remember, we need to make sure all of the items go back into its original box. Don't want to lose anything after counting it all, do we? To help us with this process, I'm going to hand over to Steve, who's going to show us what's inside each box. So now we're going to unpack the contents of the Goblin component box, and we'll pull out various sub-packs, each of which is labelled. You can see this is the brake pack, the pins pack, drive pack, a steering components pack, the rear axle pack, and the electrical components, the safety harness. Then we have the motor inside, surprisingly. We've got the drive wheel, which has this slot cut across here. And then we have three bearing wheels, each with these black bearings in the middle. And that's the contents of your component pack. And of course, what we should be doing is ticking those off on your checklist here. Here we have the long flat box, tip the lid over, and you can see this is the base of the chassis. Sometimes it's referred to as the floor pan. So here we have the Goblin G2 chassis parts box, a big squarish box. Um, best to use two people to actually lift the lid off this one because it, it, it's quite a tight fit. There we go, that's the contents of main chassis parts. Um, you'll notice that there is a manufacturer parts list in here with drawings which have part numbers. These aren't, aren't the green power part numbers, but on our parts list for the uh, chassis parts box, they are listed so you can match them up with our own part numbers. So let's see what we've got in this box. So we have two drive belts, you've got a spare there, a wiring kit, various wires. We have a large set of various sizes nuts and bolts and washers. The uh, steering column, seat sides. Then we have the seat back. This oddly shaped piece here is actually one of the front stub axles. The seat floor. These are the top rails of the chassis. Here we have a panel marked green power which actually is the bottom and rear of the roll bar, which I'll pull out. Here's the rollover protection bar, is the correct name for this, most commonly called a roll bar. There's our second stub axle, two front supports. This is the front hoop, then we have the rear hoop, a little angled bracket here, which actually is used for supporting the brake caliper, motor mounting bracket. This one's quite a thin piece, which helps retain the batteries. The rear axle to your front axle, front support which goes between those two long angle pieces. It's called the angle joining. The drive belt cover, two identical parts which are uh, supports for the top chassis rails, the battery tray. And then the final piece to come out of here is the motor cage. Do remember, the whole point of going through this is to check you've actually got everything that's required. So ticking all of these off as you go, taking them out of the box and unwrapping the bubble wrap is a good idea. So now we have all of the parts of the bagged uh, set of fasteners that was in the uh, chassis parts box um, laid out on the table. What we need to do is actually check against our uh, page three of our um, inventory list that each item, GP1001 for example, which is an M27 flat washer, 
matches the label on the bag. And for us to make it really easy, we've actually provided on your USB stick a layout sheet, which um, works with this, uh, what's called a sorter box. You can use um, yogurt cartons, butter tubs, any small storage containers like that. Um, and then what you could do is actually cut this out and label the, um, the storage containers with the uh, pit to pictures. Um, in this case, we've got seven of these and this layout sheet tells you how many and the product code and the description. And then we can just place that item in there and tick it off on our received column on the, box, on the uh, check sheet. Carry on and uh, when we get to the end, we'll catch up with you. So our final two boxes of your five that make up your Goblin G2 kit are identical battery boxes. So, and when you open your box, you'll find inside there's another box. Very quite heavy to actually get in and out. So what I'm going to do is briefly tip it upside down to remove the outer box and then bring it right way up again. Next box is then opened and on top, possibly they've gone down the side, are bolts and washers for attaching your ring terminals in the kit. And a little notice there. Two handles that lift up, make it easier to get the battery out of the inner box and put the inner box to one side for a moment. There's a lot of energy stored in these batteries. Um, 12, 12 volts each one, 36 amp hours for goblins this pair of batteries would last you for a whole event day uh, without the need to change. These are very safe type of batteries, uh, lead acid AGM, ad absorbed glass matte battery, which means there's no liquid acid, acid floating around inside the uh, case of the battery. So should it get damaged, it shouldn't leak. Um, having said that, you want to be very careful handling them because they are weighty, 12 kilos each or thereabouts. You do not want to drop one of these. If you drop it, you're likely to hurt yourself if it falls on your foot. Equally, you're likely to damage the battery itself. Possibly without it being obvious on the outside, you may damage just the internals um, and that can cause uh, future problems. Further safety, do not ever connect these two terminals directly together. You will potentially create a fire at that point. So be warned, dropping a spanner on there touching two wires together incorrectly, very dangerous. Um, and it's one thing that we say that you know, needs adult supervision with uh, activities around green power project. If you do short these two terminals together, you will get sparks. Sparks create spatter that could hit you in the face or in the eye. So be warned, there is potential danger with these. If you find that as time goes by, you've got a battery that is no longer performing, well, it may well be that it's not been looked after properly. Storage of these, don't leave them out in a freezing cold shed, but don't leave them in a hot greenhouse. Leave them ideally around room temperature. Um, if they're not going to be used for six months, perhaps over the winter season, then every two or three months, you ought to charge them up and make sure they're tip top in good condition. This type of battery will self discharge gradually over time, even if they're not connected to anything. So just putting them away in a cupboard and forgetting about them. When you take them out next season, you may find they don't work at all. So we're going to do a little introduction to the tools that were required for building your Goblin kit car. Um, I've got a selection of tools on the table which encompass everything you should need. Um, having multiple sets of tools can be useful if you have multiple teams working on different aspects of the car at once. So whilst I've got small numbers here, you may want to duplicate some of these. So we'll start off with the simplest of tools, which is what we call a combination spanner. Um, combination because it has an open-ended spanner at one end and a ring spanner at the other end. In this case, marked with a 19, indicating it's a 19 millimeter spanner which refers to the distance between the flats on the head of the nut or bolt that you're going to tighten up with it. Best way to tighten something up is with a ring spanner or a socket, which I'll come on to in a minute. That gives you a better grip on the thing that you're tightening. Access can be difficult though sometimes, which means you can only get the open-ended end of the spanner onto the nut or bolt. For your goblin build, we need sizes 8, 10, 13, 17 and 19 specifically. Shouldn't need any other sizes. 
The next spanner I have along the table here, it's actually a ratchet spanner. And you can hear the ratchet working. With a standard combination ring spanner, you have to put it on your nut or bolt, tighten, take it off, put, move it around, put it back on, tighten again. That's quite a slow process. With your ratchet spanner, you can tighten, wind it back, tighten, wind it back, tighten and repeat your action much more quickly. So it's a quicker way of doing up your nut and bolt. The next way for doing up nuts and bolts is with a socket. So this part is the socket. Again, comes in different sizes. We will push a button on the top of the handle, our ratchet handle, and you can hear there's a ratchet there and it only tightens in one direction. And we can reverse that if we want to undo something. Some bolts have a recess or a hole in the top of them in a hexagonal shape. They're referred to as Allen key bolts or socket cap bolts. And the tool you do those up with is an Allen key. If you use this end, the long end inserted into your uh, bolt, you haven't got much leverage. You, you, it's easy when it's loose, you can tighten it up nice and quickly. But once it starts to tighten up, you can't actually tighten it very much because you can't get a lot of leverage on this end. If you swap it round and put the short end into your bolt, then you've got a lot of leverage here to be able to tighten it up nice and tight. Again, variety of sizes. Um, usually they come in as a set, something like this. They also come as socket pieces. So we've got an Allen key, hexagonal Allen key here, which we could easily fit onto our ratchet handle. Next, simple flat bladed electrical screwdriver for when you're doing your wiring, there's a few screws to do up. Not many, but useful to have. Then we have a hammer. The only time that that should be needed for assembly of a goblin is when assembling the back axle and inserting a pin into that, which we will cover later in a, in a subsequent build video. We do recommend that an adult is uh, doing that part of the, the build because hitting things with hammers can be dangerous and hence, the safety goggles. So we would advise covering eyes when uh, hammering things. Safety is important. Agreed. Safety is really important and you should always look after yourself and others around you when working on the car. From the moment you start building the car you are a team and you don't want your friends getting hurt. Now there's one other tool that you will need when wiring the car and that is wire strippers. Wire strippers remove the outer insulation of a cable allowing us to make good electrical contacts. So that's the parts counted, tools identified. The only thing left for me to do is to talk about the build order. Now if working in a team of five and six, you might want to work as one complete team following the build videos as they are laid out in the playlist. If however, you have a larger team or you're feeling a little bit more confident, there are some aspects of the build that can be done in parallel. Let's bring up a diagram. As mentioned, you can build the car in video order, a very simple linear path. But due to the clever design of the car, we have what's called sub-assemblies. Sub-assemblies are typically units that are pre-assembled before being fitted. Car manufacturers use sub-assemblies in their design all the time because it helps speed up production when it comes to building the car. You can have multiple components being assembled and then it all comes together at the final completion point. If we were to build the sub-assemblies parallel to the critical path, you can see we shorten the overall build time. So if you have the resource or are just feeling confident enough, you can split your team and follow this diagram completing sub-assemblies just in time for them to be fitted to the main chassis of the car. However you decide to build the car, remember, it's about having fun and learning basic engineering principles. It's a big challenge, but we are here to support you through it. And that's the end of this video. If you need any further assistance with the Green Power Project, please always feel free to email or call the office. We also have some brilliant community groups where teams share their experiences and expertise with each other. It's a wonderful place for collaboration, so don't miss out. All of the information you need is in the description down below. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like and maybe even a subscribe, pretty please. Still, plenty of building left to be done, so I'll catch you on the next one.